My grandma and your grandma sitting by the fire. My grandma and city, your grandma gonna set your place on fire. Don't you know? Hey now, hey now, it's breakfast with Bob. Chippin' up in a banana, chippin' up in a banana. Pacho Man! Welcome to day three, Breakfast with Bob. We are brought to you by EAS Sports Nutrition, Hoka One One, Polar Oska Wellness, Velo Fix, Four Seasons Walleye, and we are airing on triathlonworld.com. Our next guest, 2013 Ironman World Champion, Mr. Frederick Van Leerda. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Bob. Always great to catch up with you. Thank you. So how are you feeling coming in this year? I feel okay, like the last couple of years, I must say. It's, uh, I'm healthy, in good shape, so uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday. And you've had, a, uh, this year you were you know, fourth at Ironman France and sixth at Luxembourg. You feel good about your season leading in here? Because it seems like you, <laughs> you were kept your racing limited yeah. so that this is all the eggs are in this basket. True. Um, after last year, we found we I raced a little bit too much, and let's say this year we, uh, yeah, we decided to do only one Ironman instead of two, like last year. Yes. And um, yeah, a couple of seventy point threes, like Sweden. I was second. That was quite good. Yes. Uh, just behind Andy Dreitz. Yes. Um, but yeah, in the beginning of the season, I broke my collarbone due to an uh, accident, so that put me a little bit further in the in the race in Nice. I only had six weeks to prepare Nice after a broken collarbone. Yes. So let's say that's that's part of the only fourth place. So uh, I yeah. I was aiming Nothing for more than, but place, yes. that's that's life. Yeah. Um, when you when you look at 2015, you, you won South Africa. You're fifth yeah. at Frankfurt, but as you get a little older doing three full Ironmans and running three full marathons and racing them at the level you race them yeah that's a lot it's a lot uh, it worked in 2012 but obviously it didn't work last year so uh, but you know I'm as I look at it right now I feel yes. a lot more fresh uh, mentally and physically and I think we made the right decision and uh, I hope it it all turns out very good on, on Saturday sometimes when your season starts a little later not that you ever want to get sick or have a crash but no. sometimes it, it sort of forces you to, sure. to focus on the end of the season and not do too much too early. True, and for me it was a different approach uh, in the season because if you crash in April, the season, let's say, must still begin. So, um, yes. yeah, it was a different approach, another way to look at it. And, uh, you know, it opened my eyes in a couple of ways and it was quite nice to experience that and, uh, yeah, get back to my best level now right. in, in October. So in 2012, you take third here. Mm -hmm. And going from that to, that's a big step to go from third to first. What did you yeah. need to do in, in between, you know, th from the year, from 2012 to 2013? When you finish on the podium, it shows that you can win. Yeah, true. But you also have to sometimes do things a little differently to get there. Yeah, but, you know, I don't agree 100%. It's like, it's not a big step from third to first. I mean, when you get third, I yes. think... Everybody will tell you, or the people who experienced it, if you get third, you believe you can win it. And, yes. and that's really important. And I mean, physically, there's not such a big difference. It's just the day that decides and maybe the mental belief that you can win it right. will help you to, to go from third to first. But yeah, let's say that, that all those guys in the, in the very front of the race, they all can win it, I think. So when you look back, besides you win, winning the Ironman, was there a race a number of years ago that you looked at, uh, that you look at today, mm -hmm. is is a very important race to you. Yeah. Uh, that sort of told you you could be one of the best in the world. Sure, and uh, that's uh, that's Abu Dhabi 2011. When I look back at that result, yes. that was uh, it's not an Ironman event, but let's say it was a three kilometer swim, 200 kilometer bike, and a 20 kilometer run. Yes. And I beat. When I look now at the results, it was like uh, yeah. a who's who. You beat who's everybody. Who? Yeah, like uh, Craig was. Craig Alexander yes. was sixth. Marino was second. Uh, I should look again at the results, yes. but I was. That was something like wow. I can. I can run. Win really big races. So that was a really big step for me. Just like I said, not only physically, but especially mentally. So it changed the way you looked at yourself. It's like, hey, if I can beat Craig Alexander, who's won the Ironman or was yeah. going to win the Ironman that year, uh, or had won, won it twice, that told you that why can't I beat him True. here yeah. in Kona? Of course, and uh, it's really important just to, to prove it, to see it, and to know that you can do it because telling yourself is not the same as, uh, as proving it. What made that day special in 2013? Did you do anything different or did you just <laughs> execute your plan perfectly? Yeah. Let's say I executed my plan perfectly, uh, didn't make any mistakes, 
Um, I'm pretty convinced that I had a bit of luck as well. Um, I, think I think you always need that. You always need a little bit of luck, but I, I mean, the day when I won it afterwards, I was like, okay, I won it and I did my very best and I, I put on the table everything I had. But now I realize you need some luck as well. So uh, yeah, let's say all those things together make a good mix and uh, prove that I can win it. You've been racing here long enough to see how the field keeps getting better mm -hmm. and better when you know, Jan Ferdano and, and people come over from that Olympic sure. distance. Uh, for you, when you look at the field, or when you prepare for this race, do you look at, oh, there's Jan Ferdano, there's Sebastian Keenley, or do you primarily focus on you? I think both are important. I think uh, racing, it's important to look at yourself, to listen to your body and do everything you can do, not only what the, what the others are doing, but it's true that everybody follows a little bit uh, all the athletes through the year. And uh, that's also important to know who is up to what, who did right. what. And um, let's say like this year, I, I see it's a little bit a mix of younger people coming in, mm -hmm. uh, more experienced guys who are there. So I think it will be a quite good dynamic in the race. When you, when you see a Jan Ferdano, and you see him go 7:35 at Challenge Roth. Do you do you look at that and go, oh my God, that guy's in a he's in a different league right now? Well, different league, maybe not, but it's it's really 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 fast. What really he did, impressive. So, yeah, yeah, really impressive. And I think uh, when you look at that result, his time there, I think he must be capable of being the first guy going under eight hours here as well. So if you see a 7:35, and you look back in the history, what what my coach Luke did. What, what other people did, yes. um, so yeah, will be interesting to see, yeah. So after 2013, you're Belgian Sportsman of the Year, mm -hmm. I watched some of that video online, S having, having a day like that and then everything that came with it, mm -hmm. right, because you're second Belgian athlete to win this race following your coach uh, Luc van Lierda, who won it twice, how did that change, the, uh, change your <laughs> status yeah. in Belgium? Um, or did it? It did, but let's say as a person, I try to, to stay who I am and, and just act like I am. Right. And um, it's true, I, get, I got a lot more attention. Yes. Now it's, it's going down a little bit, but that sport, you know, it's, uh, if, if you're on top, if you're world champion, of what, course. What have you done lately? Yeah, yeah, yeah what have you done <laughs> lately? That's, that's like a question I get a lot now. <laughs> no, but, Do you really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. But that's, you know, that's life and that sport. Um, if, you, if you get another great result, then they will be back. So uh, that's part of life but I, I knew about that, so I tried to enjoy it as much, as much as I could at that very moment. So I, I was at every prize giving ceremony. I was, you know, I, I tried to enjoy it. Maybe right. it's a once in a lifetime thing. Maybe exactly. it happens twice or three times, but uh, let's say that one time I, I wanted to be there everywhere. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. So when you have a coach who is a, a legend in your country, yeah. Luke, and has won the race twice, what does he bring to you as a coach? How does he help you out? experience. Um, I think from the day I started to work with him, everything he told me was like, yeah, Luke tells me so, must be true, no? So, so you don't have to question. Yeah, you know no he's questions. done it, he's won it twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and still right now he's, he's like a strategic guy who puts in the end of every season or the beginning of every season a good plan together, how we should do it. And I'm a guy, I'm a guy who, who likes to, um, let's say, yeah, organize everything and he helps me a lot at that. So uh, we make a plan, we follow it and um, I don't question it anymore. Yes. It's like we go for it and that's it. Yeah. What's, what's always interesting to me, you win it in 2013. And in 2014, mm -hmm. you were right in the mix. Yeah. You, know, you were right here, there was Ben Hoffman, there was you and you guys were going back and forth. And then, you know, you, I think you ended up in eighth or something like eighth, that. Yeah. But like you said, there's a lot of luck that goes into things. You miss an aid station or yeah. you miss a gel. and. It was when you have a race like that where really you did everything right yeah and you were in a position where you could have gone into the lead you know you, yeah. you, you could have you could no. have gotten this podium yeah you could yeah, have podium. gotten the podium yeah because yeah, no uh, no sebi was yeah. yeah but the podium was right there and it was mm -hmm. like three four five of you guys running right along Close. here and yeah. back and uh, what did, did can you analyze that and go okay what happened what what either mistake or something happened along the way there yeah, something happened and it was exactly an energy lap and afterwards we found out I had like a little muscle rupture in my uh, abdominal muscles, but you know, was it, I don't know, the year after the, the wind, the stress or whatever, I don't know, but oh, something... interesting. Yeah, I don't so know. You, oh, wow. I so don't you know found what, that what out happened. afterwards. Yeah, afterwards we had a look at it because 
first thing you think is if you have some pain here, you think, yeah, it must be nutrition or something that didn't Just pass. A cramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we found out uh, afterwards that I had a little rupture. But you know, that sport at the limit, if your body at some point says, oh, this is too fast or this is enough. Yes. You have no more, uh, <laughs> no more things to add. Well, the fact that you've, you're constantly in the mix and constantly right up there, finishing first, second, third, in so many races, do you look at this race and go, I, I think I can still win here? Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't come back if I didn't believe I could win it again. So um, it's it won't be easy, but it's never easy. And um, but I think I still can do it. Yes. I, I still have the level. I still see at my training. Uh, sessions, my my data, I see, I I still have a really good level, so uh, I think I must still be able to to win this thing. Yeah. What would it mean to you to oh. match Luke Van Lierde with two wins, being from Belgium? Yeah, it's it's not only Luke, but it's just me who uh, experienced everything in 2013, and it's uh, you can ask everyone who won it here. It's magic. So uh, it is magic. You know, isn't that's it? that's. Uh, a dream again because I won it once. Now I want to win it twice. So. And winning this, there, there's not many times you come to a race where everybody wants this race. It's no. yeah. You go to another race, people might be training through it. They might be yeah, not peaking. Know. They're peaking for this race. Yeah. Nobody's here thinking this isn't their A race. No, no, no. That's true. But in that case, I have a, an advantage that I won it. So I think I'm I'm a little bit less stressed than, than some other guys who really want to win it badly and, yes. and maybe it's their last or their second last uh, try to, to win it. So yes. that's that's something that puts me a little bit more at ease and um, maybe that can help me to uh, to get it. That's again. a really good point because it's yeah. almost like you're you're playing with house money. You, no. <laughs> you know, you, you, you've won it. I achieved it. Yeah. You yeah. achieved the, yeah. the pinnacle of the sport. So True. you can take some chances out yeah. there. You can you can roll the dice a little bit on things yeah. that happen and make a move on the r ride or the run? Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's something that uh, that helps, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Freddie, <laughs> always, always a pleasure to have you Thank in. Thank you. And is there anybody in particular in this field besides Jan Ferdano that <laughs> maybe we're not talking about that, that you guys... Oh. The lots of them, huh? Not not only one. There's lots of them. Lots yeah, of yeah. them. So, yes. And like I say, if you have your day, everything works perfectly. You have a little bit of chance. I think there's, let's say, 10, 15 candidates to win. There it. really are. Yeah. yeah 10, sure. 15 guys can yeah. win it. Mm -hmm. And one of those is Frederick Van Lierde. I hope. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Pancho man, take us out. <laughs> Your grandma said you by the fire. My grandma said your grandma gonna set your place on fire. Don't you know? Hey now, hey now, it's breakfast with Bob. Chip my feet up, pop my leg. Chip my feet up, pop my leg. Oh, Uncle Man! Thank you, man. Thank you.